Hello, today we're going to discuss ERM for probabilistic classification. So the key idea is that we have a probabilistic classifier, G sub theta, which depends on a parameter theta. It takes as input U and it returns to us a probability distribution over the target set. And uh, we're going to choose the theta by ERM, or regularized ERM, as we usually do. And we want to judge the performance of the probabilistic classifier using the average negative log likelihood on a test data set. And our data set, remember what it consists of, it consists of n points, u1, through un and v1 through vn and we're produ going to produce uh, corresponding distributions p hat 1 through p hat n which are our predictions at each of those data points u1 through un and then we're going to compare our predictions p hat i with the true value vi so in order to do that, we need a loss function, and the loss function has to be able to compare two things, a p hat and a v. And the p hat is a distribution on our target set script v, and the v is actually an element of script v. And so, um, so we're comparing things that aren't really like... Um, one thing to notice here is that p hat is actually a probability distribution, it's a function. And so we're feeding in to this function L another function and a V, which is just a, one of our possible targets. And so once we've got such a thing, uh, we are uh, going to look at the average loss, 1 on n, sum from i is 1 to n, the loss of p hat i and v i. And we're going to choose the theta to minimize the average loss. And if we're doing regularized DRM, then we'll have a regularization uh, function r of theta, and we'll minimize the average loss plus lambda times r of theta. Now the particular uh, uh, loss of interest is going to be this thing, LCE. Um, and what it is, is it's the negative log likelihood of V under the distribution P hat. And so remember that we computed the negative log likelihood of our entire set of P's and V's. Uh, assuming that all of the v's were independent. Um, and so here, we're just looking at one of those for a single data point, and we're looking at the negative log likelihood of getting that particular v under a particular distribution p hat. And this is called LCE. The CE stands for cross entropy. So this is also called the cross entropy loss. And it's just the negative log of the probability of the outcome v. When you look at this, it's important to realize that it really is a function of two things. It's a function of p hat and it's a function of v. And that function is, of course, a composition operation composed with a, a negative log operation. We're taking p hat and v and we're evaluating p hat at the point v. Um, and of course, we can do that because p hat is a function. Um, now, because uh, p hat is uh, less than or equal to 1, well, the negative log of it must be greater than or equal to 0. And the only way you can have the, the, the negative log equal to 0 is if uh, p hat is equal to 1. That, is means we would, that would mean we would be completely certain about the outcome. In other words, the probability of getting that particular v uh, would, be, uh, would be 1 and the probability of getting any other v, therefore, would be zero. So 
that's when our prediction is that the true V is actually the V we're evaluating at and with 100% probability. Um, and so we want the negative log likelihood uh, to be small so that uh, as much as, as close as possible we're getting P hat of V close to 1. Now, um, uh, this uh, cross entropy loss, it certainly is a loss function, but it's a loss function which is aimed specifically at probabilistic prediction. Um, uh, and this is a little different from when we did ERM for either deterministic classification or for regression. Uh, there we had a loss function which was a function of y hat and y. And um, it was comparing y hat and y, the predicted value y hat with the actual value y. And those are both the same kind of quantities. They were both vectors in Rm. And here, this is a little different in two ways. First of all, our prediction isn't a y hat, but it's a p hat. So it's a function, it's a probability distribution. And the second is, is that the, the, the second argument of the loss function isn't an embedded V, it's actually the raw target B. Um, and of course the raw target B is simply one of the um, one of the original target set script V. Um, and we don't need to embed it into uh, uh, into RM in order to be able to evaluate a loss and so we don't do that. So we can certainly compute the empirical risk on the entire data set now that we've got a loss function. We simply uh, compute 1 on n, the sum from i is 1 to n, of LCE, of uh, the p hat i that's with v i. And p hat i is the prediction at the ith value of u, and v i is the true value of the target variable in the ith data point. And p hat i is itself generated by the predictor. It's g of u i. Um, now, one nice thing about this is that this is actually our performance metric. And so, uh, remember that one of the things we did in regression and deterministic classification was that we had something we really cared about, such as the Neyman Pearson loss, but we couldn't actually minimize that, and so we used a proxy loss. We used a loss function which was a replacement for the true quantity of interest, the true performance metric. And here we don't need to do that because the average value of the cross entropy loss is the average negative log likelihood, which is a performance metric that we care about. It is the probability of seeing those data points vi under p hat, or it is the likelihood of the joint distribution p hat 1 through p hat n. Um, uh, the, uh, now remember we've seen already that uh, when you have a constant predictor, that means p hat i doesn't depend on i, um, that you can work out what this quantity is and that is the cross entropy. So the average cross entropy loss is the cross entropy when uh, p hat is a constant. So when we're interpreting this, uh, we think about it as a measure of implausibility. The cross entropy loss of p hat and v is large when v is implausible under distribution p hat. And it's small when v is likely under distribution p hat. Uh, and so people have names for this kind of thing. People might call it surprise or perplexity. Um, Now, um, we would like to be able to do um, predictors, to use predictors which generate vectors. Right? So we've certainly seen that if we've got a, a, a tree, um, 
then we can simply label the leaves of the tree with probabilities, probability distributions, and that's enough. We could simply evaluate the output of that predictor in the uh, uh, in the loss function. Um, uh, however, if we've got say a, a linear predictor um, or uh, uh, um, certain other types of predictors, then the predictor produces a, a vector. And um, of course we can't just use that vector as a probability distribution. It might not be non-negative, it might not sum up to one. Um, and so um, we need a way around that. If we were doing point classification, what we would do is we would unembed a vector y hat in RK um, by uh, just uh, picking the corresponding target to be v sub i, where i is the uh, index of the representative psi i, which is the closest of the representatives to y hat. Um, and that is great, it maps the vector y hat in RK into the target set script V. Um, that's not quite what we want to do here. We want to unembed and map y hat into a probability distribution on the target set script V. Uh, and there's a, a, a way of doing this which is very common and that's the following on embedding. It's called the logistic map or the soft arg max function. Um, and what we do is we define p hat of vk to be the exponential of y hat k divided by the sum of the exponentials of y hat j. Um, and this is a map um, which for each k gives us p hat of vk, it maps a vector y hat in rk to a probability distribution. And you can see that if you sum from k is 1 up to capital K of p hat vk, you get 1. And you can see that because it's the ratio of an exponential and the sum of exponentials, it's a non-negative number. So it certainly satisfies the two fundamental requirements for a probability distribution. And this map sigma um, uh, it has lots of names. Um, I guess the community cannot agree as to what the right thing to think of it, right way to name it is. And people call it the logistic map. People call it an activation function and uh, they use it as an activation function in a neural network. People call it the inverse link function, the soft arg max function, the normalized exponential or the soft max function. Um, let, let's take a look at it slightly more closely. Um, so uh, what does it do? Well the exponential is mapping the real line to the non-negative half of the real line. And so um, what the exponentials are doing is replacing all of the entries, all of the components of y hat with non-negative numbers. And then the division, all that's doing is normalizing it. Right? It's arranging for the components of p hat to sum up to 1. Um, and so we can see that we are getting a probability distribution. Uh, you can also see that, for example, if you take y hat, your predicted uh, output of your predictor and add a constant to each entry, but then that doesn't affect p hat. Um, you can also see that if you increase one of the components, say k, uh, if you increase y hat k, then that will increase the probability at p hat vk and decrease all the others because the others have to be chosen to sum up to 1. And so it is um, larger y hats correspond to larger probabilities.
Um, but it can never equal either 0 or 1. Um, uh, p hat vk is close to 0 when y hat k is much smaller than all the others. And p hat vk is close to 1 when y hat k is much larger than all the other components of y hat. Um, there's one more special case, which is when y hat is 0. And when y hat is 0, well, then you end up with p hat of vk is the uniform distribution, 1 over k. And in fact, if y hat is uh, a vector with all of its entries equal, then uh, you'll also end up with the uniform distribution. So now we can do uh, ERM with logistic unembedding. Um, um, let's just uh, compare with what we would have done in the deterministic case. In deterministic classification, we take our U's and our V's, we embed them as X's and Y's, and then we use ERM to minimize uh, the loss evaluated at G of X, I, and Y, I, the average loss over all of the I's. And then we get the resulting predictor um, uh, by composing it with the embedding and the unembedding. So if you give me a uh, particular U, this should say U, so this should say V hat is psi dagger G theta phi of U. Uh, then I, com I compose, I take U, I apply the embedding to it, phi of U, I apply the predictor G theta to that, and then I unembed uh, the resulting output of G theta to give me a V hat. Uh, and same here, this quantity here should be a U. Um, for probabilistic classification, we don't embed V. We embed uh, a U using phi. And, uh, and then what we do is we minimize the average loss, the average cross entropy loss. And here, the two entries in the cross entropy loss, one of them is simply V, the true V, and the other one is the unembedded value of the output of the predictor. So G theta of Xi is going to produce a Y hat, and sigma of G theta of Xi is going to produce a p hat. And so the resulting predictor is given by uh, uh, sigma composed with g theta composed with phi of u. So the role of the unembedding here is a little different. Right? The unembedding lives inside the loss function in uh, probabilistic classification. And its role is to take those vectors that come out of our linear predictor g theta and turn them into probability distributions. Let's take a closer look at our loss function. Um, let's suppose that uh, we're unembedding using the logistic map, the logistic unembedding. We're, so we've got a predictor that produces a y hat and we pump it through the function sigma to get a probability distribution p hat. Now let's look at the cross entropy loss and say we've got such a p hat and let's evaluate what the cross entropy loss at p hat vk is. So we've got a particular v, say vk, that we're evaluating at. So what is that? Well, the cross entropy loss just says evaluate the probability distribution p hat at the point vk. So it's just the kth entry of that probability distribution. That's just the negative log of uh, the exponential of y hat k divided by the sum of the exponentials of all the entries. And that's the cross entropy loss. We could simplify that slightly. Um, it's going to be minus y hat k plus the log of the sum in the denominator. And this is an expression that we've seen before. 
This is simply the logistic loss when kappa i is 1. And so the logistic loss which we used for deterministic classification um, is exactly the same as the cross entropy loss when you use the logistic unembedding. And so if we're computing one, we're computing the other since we're doing exactly the same thing. And so when we look at the empirical risk that we are using uh, for uh, logistic regression in the deterministic case, that's exactly the average negative log likelihood. And we can simply use uh, the y hats that come out of logistic regression, those predictions are vectors, but instead of unembedding them using the nearest neighbor map, we unembed them using the logistic unembedding, p hat is sigma y hat. And that way, instead of getting a deterministic classifier, we get a probabilistic classifier. So that's nice. It says that, in some sense, what we've been doing when we were doing logistic regression is actually computing a probabilistic classifier all along. And now we know how to compute the probabilities. Um, now we can we can interpret this if we uh, 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 look at what p hat is. It's um, well, it's sigma of y hat, and let's use this in vector notation. X of y hat here means the element wise exponential of the vector y hat, and one transpose is doing the sum for us. One transpose x of y hat is summing over all of the exponentials, and y hat here is theta transpose x when we're doing logistic regression and we're using a linear predictor. Then x1 is 1 is the constant feature and we're standardizing all the other features. Um, and that means that the first row of theta, theta1 transpose, is y hat when x2 through d is 0. So all of the non-constant features are taking their mean value. And the corresponding distribution is sigma of theta 1. Um, then theta ij gives the effect of xi on p hat j. And so that tells us in particular that if we uh, have a very large component of theta ij, then xi is going to be a significant effect on the probability distribution p hat j. Now we can also do exactly the same for Boolean classification. We can do Boolean probabilistic classification and we could just use the methods we've seen so far. Um, uh, but there's one special wrinkle that people like to do for Boolean classification. Um, and that is take advantage of the fact that when you've got a probability distribution over two quantities, you only actually need to specify that by one number rather than by two numbers. Because the other one has to be one minus it. So if V is the target set is V1, V2, and we're going to guess P hat is G of U. Um, uh, instead of uh, just giving P hat com uh, comp of V1 and P hat of V2, we can just give one of them, since they must sum up to one. And so we might give p hat of v2, which is the probability that v is v2, and just define p hat of v1 is 1 minus p hat of v2. Now, if we're only going to uh, need one number, one probability, then we only need one component of y hat. So if we're using a, a predictor which is generating a vector in Rk, but we're reducing ourselves to instead of needing two probabilities, needing one probability, we can just pick k is equal to 1 or m is equal to 1. And then we've got a scalar produced by our predictor, a y hat, 
and we want to generate uh, a probability out of that scalar. So that y hat could be any real number. What do we do? We take 1 on 1 plus e to the minus y hat. This is also called the sigmoid function. And people denote this by also sigma. And it's giving us a number which is between 0 and 1. It's uh, uh, 0 as y hat gets large and negative, And it becomes 1 as y hat becomes large and positive. Um, and so we're saying, OK, well, now we take y hat. We take sigma of y hat. That gives us a number between 0 and 1, which we will use as our probable uh, prediction probability for target value v1. And to get the prediction probability for target value v2, we'll just take 1 minus sigma of y hat. And so we've mapped a real number to a distribution on v, which is exactly what we needed to do. Um, and so this is called the sigmoid function. Um, the inverse map, which allows you to map from the probabilities back to the y hat, we don't need to do that for uh, classification, but that has a name. It's called the log, ops, log odds or the logit function. And here's a, a plot of the sigmoid. You can see it goes between 0 at minus infinity and to 1 at plus infinity. And it's half when y hat is 0. You can also see the symmetry. Um, that symmetry is that if I take it and rotate it about this uh, center point right here, then uh, I get the same function. And that's expressed neatly here, that sigma of minus y hat is 1 minus sigma of y hat. So let's compute, exactly as we did in the multi-class case, let's compute what happens if you use the sigmoid unembedding and you evaluate the cross-entropy loss. So we've got the cross-entropy loss is the negative log of the probability at vi. And, well, we know what sigma of y hat i is. If uh, 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 and um, we need to, um, it's either going to, get, it's going to give us two numbers um, as our distribution. It'll give us sigma y hat i um, for the probability that v is v1. And it'll give us 1 minus sigma y hat i for the probability that v is v2. And so when we're computing the cross entropy loss, we need to evaluate this probability at vi. And so if vi is v1, well, then we get the first case minus log sigma y hat i. If vi is v2, then we get the second case. And now we go through into the algebra and we see, well, log of sigma is, uh, sorry, negative log of sigma is log of 1 plus e to the minus y hat. And um, this is also something that we've seen before. This is the Boolean logistic loss. And so when we were doing Boolean classification in the deterministic case, we were also behind the scenes doing probabilistic classification. And the way one gets the probabilities is by taking the y hat that comes out of the predictor and feeding it into the sigmoid function. And this is the corresponding empirical risk minimization problem. 1 on n times the average of, sorry, the loss, the empirical risk is the average of the cross entropy loss. And the cross entropy loss splits into two cases, the cases where vi is v1 and the cases where vi is v2. And we choose theta to minimize the empirical risk as before. And once we've got theta, theta transpose x is y hat. And then sigma theta transpose x is the probability that v is v1 at x. And 1 minus sigma theta transpose x is the probability that v is v2 at x.
you know, and this is simply expressing the same thing in a more convenient notation um, where we've used the vector notation here. Let's look at a couple of examples. Here we have um, a two-class problem, three different two-class problems. We've done empirical risk minimization. And here we've plotted the data points, the red and the blue data points. There's no test or train set here. We're just using one data set. And there's no regularization. Um, and uh, we've plotted here in color, in the shading, the corresponding probability distribution, sigma of theta transpose x. And you can see that it does what we expect it to do. In the middle, here, along this line, there's uncertainty, and the probability is half. As we move this way, the probability of red becomes 1. As we move this way, the probability of red becomes 0, or equivalently, the probability of blue becomes 1. Um, you can also see that here, in this example in the middle, We've got data points where the blue and the red overlap considerably. And as a result, the distribution goes quite smoothly and slowly between being quite certain over here that it's red and being quite certain over here that it's blue. And then a probabilities that are somewhere between 0 and 1 in this middle region. And there's this wide band of uncertainty where the predictor cannot make a very definite prediction as to whether the uh, target variable is going to be red or blue. Here's a case where it's much more separated and um, there's a, a narrow band of uncertainty and then very definite blue, very definite predictions of red. And this is the advantage of using a probabilistic predictor over a deterministic predictor, is that the probabilistic predictor, when it's giving you a prediction of probability which is close to a half, well then you can say, well, we're in some region where we can't make very certain predictions. And we're on the boundary, and the reality is it could be either a blue or a red point. You can also see this in the matrix in the vector of theta. Uh, so here the norm of theta is rather small, and here the norm of theta is much larger. When the norm of theta is large, well then theta transpose x varies rapidly with x, and so sigma of theta transpose x varies rapidly with x, and the probability changes quickly as we move in this direction. Over here, because theta has a small norm, then the probability changes slowly as we move in the corresponding direction. Here's a three-class case. This is the iris data set. And remember what we had where in this iris data set, when we look at these particular two components of the data, we find that the red points are well separated from the green and the blues, but the green and the blues overlap considerably, and it's hard to tell a green from a blue. Um, so on the left-hand plot, we're seeing multi-class logistic regression. We're unembedding using the nearest neighbor unembedding, and this is deterministic classification. And in the right-hand plot, we're unembedding using the logistic map, you know, sigma of theta transpose x. And we're getting out of that a three-dimensional probability vector, which gives us the probability of red, the probability of green, and the probability of blue. And what's showing up here is, this, is the level of certainty of the prediction. Over here, red is really very certain. Then when we transition, across this line, we end up in uh, a region where there's significant uncertainty. So over here, our prediction is 100. Zero, zero. 
or close to that. And over here, our prediction is zero, a half, a half. And there's much more uncertainty. We know it's not red, but we can't quite tell whether it's green or whether it's blue. So let's summarize. We use the average log likelihood on the test data to judge a probabilistic classifier. This is our performance metric, and it happens to equal the empirical risk when we're using the cross entropy loss. And there's a loss, so there's a loss function which exactly equals to our preferred performance metric. Um, and once we, if we're using a, a linear predictor, then we can unembed the prediction into a distribution using the logistic unembedding, and that gives us probability distributions. And the deterministic methods that we've seen for classification using either Boolean logistic loss or multi-class logistic loss with the one hot embedding are exactly the same ERM optimization that we do when we do probabilistic classification. But to construct the probabilities, instead of unembedding using the nearest neighbor map to get the deterministic prediction, we unembed using sigma to get the probabilistic prediction.